Jeremy Lin, ESPN and the racist media. Does ESPN's apology end the controversy? No. John no, Freeman, no are you, I'm going to ask you a question. Not to get away from the specifics, but are you exploiting the Jeremy Lin controversy by writing about the Jeremy Lin controversy? No. You know what I'm saying? Yes. No. Do you no. think the media is racist? I think there are elements of this coverage that are very racist, yes. yes. The elements of this Jeremy Lin coverage for sure are racist. Yeah. But does that, I mean, does that surprise you? Nothing surprised me Nothing anymore. Nothing surprised you anymore. Mm. Everything now, surprised me now anymore. Now, the, 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 the issue that you bring up in your piece has to do with um, someone at ESPN. It may have actually been a couple of people had um, racist overtones to some of the headlines that were written or something to that effect. Yeah. Uh, ESPN went on. They, they let this person go. They fired the person, right. I believe. Right. Now, I, I don't want to say whether what the guy did was right or wrong. It obviously made a lot of people it was, it was wrong. unhappy. Okay, so it was, it was wrong. wrong. No question about it. But let me ask you a question about the amount of media that we give to these kind. Do we take these incidents and blow them out of proportion? Totally. No, that's what we do nowadays. It's 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 kind of it's kind of you know gang journalism where you. The story is there. Everyone gangs up on the story. Right. So it's another angle to the Jeremy Lin story. This angle is the the, the, the media is racist. Well, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say the entire media, but the, some of the coverage of Jeremy Lin certainly has racial overtones to it. And ESPN was the lowest of the low in that situation. Right. But what, do you, what, what more would you want ESPN to do about this? What else could the media do about these kinds of incidents? Aren't they a natural byproduct? Don't do it to, in the first place. Be nice. I understand that, but isn't, it, isn't there, I mean, isn't there a, uh, a natural byproduct? Because yeah. the media, it runs 24-7 now. It's always um, trying to cover things. It's doing it live. We're doing the show live right now, right? Very spontaneous. It's not edited. It's not like a newspaper that is heavily edited sure. and gone over. If you put out a newspaper, um, you know, there's quite a bit of time that elapses, so editors and further editors can, you know, it's much harder for things to get through. But yeah. when you're doing live TV or live yeah. things, it's only a matter of time before these things kind of pop out. No. Well, not bad taste. I can see people making making mistakes in graphics or forgetting their lines or not reading, not reading the teleprompter well, but bad taste is really, no, there's no excuse for really bad taste. No, no, I understand that, but, 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 I mean, would you say that it is understandable that some of these things have happened? I wouldn't say it's I'd say in a way it is, but it's again, there's no excuse for somebody insulting a person's race or belittling an entire right. culture of people with one quip, trying to be funny or trying to make, make yourself important or, or make ESPN important. It's, it's inexcusable. Right. And yet we know that something, it might not happen with Jeremy Lin, it may, it may happen with a different ball player or a different, something is going to come up again probably sure. in the next couple of years over a similar kind of thing. But we saw Tim Tebow last fall. Yeah, well, okay. Well, that wasn't exactly racism. That no, was about that a man's was religion, 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 right? It's an important social issue. Right. And so you're never, you can't program everything. You can't come up with something that is, that totally toes the line. So if you're a media company, well, what is the best you can do here? You tell your people, don't use bad taste. Don't act in bad taste. If you want to be funny, Okay, if it falls flat, okay, but don't act in bad taste where it's going to insult people, make people feel defensive and angry and sad. But the reality is if, you, if, if people are trying to entertain, if people are trying, as you said, to be funny, by definition, aren't you always going to be running the risk that you're going to go over the line? I mean, comedians yeah. do this all the time. SNL was hilarious last Saturday night. They, I, did a, they did a wonderful job of lampooning the media primarily in this whole situation, how, how pompous the media can be in this whole situation. That was terrific. SNL did a wonderful job. It's in my story, in fact. It's embedded in my story. But ESPN is not funny. They're supposed to be newsy, and they dropped the ball. Uh, yeah, but uh, the reality is, yeah. and you know it, know, is that, that they're an entertainment company. Yes. And, so, and so they're always kind of towing the line. We hear on on this show, you know, we try and keep it, I wouldn't say, you know, we try and keep it serious, sure. but at the same time engage in sure, uh, sure. Uh, humorous debate and, you know, I, I don't know when and we it's are now doing that, as a matter we, of fact. We're doing it right now and we're kind of riffing. There's no script. There's no teleprompter. We're right. talking right now. Right. And I'm trying to be careful with the words I pick and what I say. But there are no guarantees in this world. How can any media outlet well, guarantee I that they're not going to do anything? I think you're being too easy on ESPN. You think so? It's, it's, not, it's not, not a gun to saying, use bad taste or else we'll turn the channel. You can be informative 
and entertaining and witty, but not insulting to people. There's a very fine line there. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, like I said, I'm not in any way trying to uh, condone, yeah, no, or I'm, no. I'm trying to place it in the context in which we live in a world, and you write about the media all the time, in which the media is going all the time. Sure, sure. And uh, human mistakes, whether they're intentional or unintentional, happen all the time. Yep. And people's feelings get hurt, um, and uh, things are said that shouldn't be said. I think you're being too easy on them. I think you're being too soft on them. That's not the way of the world. No, I think you're being too soft on them. The way of the world. If you make a quip and it falls flat, okay, too bad. But if you make a quip and it's insulting and people take offense to it, that's not a good thing. There's no excuse for that. Yeah. You know, I just, I'm just conscious that, that we, we hold people in the media, just as we do politicians, to an extremely high standard. Right. And, you know, the net result, um, if you're very censorious of people, is that you end up talking like politicians do. Politicians go around their whole life terrified of saying anything that might offend anybody. Well, and that's why you get a certain level of banality and kind of sound bites that people just repeat over and over again. Is that the kind of world you want to live in, John Friedman? Of course not, but I don't want to live in a world where bad taste is accepted as, oh, one of those things, right. oh, it happens. This right. doesn't, it didn't happen.